My allergies are really acting up today, but we're going to try to get through this. So, Untitled Unmastered, Kendrick Lamar, let's go. Hello everyone, this is the Afro Avenger, and today we're going to be looking at um, Untitled Unmastered by Kendrick Lamar. It was released March 4th of this year, 2016. Um, some chart information, it debuted at number 1 on the US Billboard 200. Um, it was released on the labels Top Dog, Aftermath, and Interscope. And there aren't any singles unless you want to count his um, Untitled live performances. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get this started. This is not a studio album, it's actually kind of a compilation album. The amount of praise this album has gotten, despite being what it is, is quite astonishing. It's received universal acclaim, and all it is is a bunch of unreleased demos Kendrick recorded during his recording of last year's Rocket to Space and Beyond album, Tip of a Butterfly. Uh, some of these tracks he's performed live, and fans were wondering if he would be releasing another album really soon, or if he would release official studio versions of these songs. So, is this album truly worth all the praise even though it's as the title suggests untitled and unmastered the music mainly follows in the same style of the finished product of course um, all these songs were recorded during those sessions so just like to pimp a butterfly uh, the majority of the tracks on here and there are only eight so it's pretty short contain elements of blending hip-hop with jazz funk soul and R&B the album opens up with a kind of jazz intro with a very sensual, slightly awkward background narration going on into the actual song. The album itself is actually quite jazz heavy, maybe even more so than Tip of Butterfly. The sampling style is very East Coast hip hop, very 90s Nas or Wu-Tang Clan style. The following track is a major turnaround though, still containing things like saxophone samples, but now being very trap heavy. Aside from that, Kendrick does a lot more singing on this track, having a very laxed, lazy flow, but later on in the track he uses the same verse he used for his Untitled 2 performance on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. This is also the first track to introduce the whole pimp pimp hooray thing, which could symbolize the praise of Tim Pimp Butterfly. The final track on the album, track 8, and yes these tracks don't have names, uh, feels the most completed out of all the tracks. This track is the first half of the aforementioned Untitled 2 Jimmy Fallon performance, appropriately given the fan name of Blue Faces. It's funky, energetic, and smooth, but putting it last was a questionable move. To be honest, I think the previous track would have made for a better closer, but it is what it is. Many of the lyrics of this album kind of pull from themes on the final album itself, considering these tracks were recorded during that period, of course. Uh, so many of the themes regarding human nature, culture, uh, politics, and Afrocentrism follow suit on this album as well. The very first track on the album deals with the ever-looming sense of destruction regarding the way humans act, and if we continue on this path, we'll wind up destroying ourselves. Other tracks like track 4 speak on the idea of free thinking, with a constant back and forth type of thing going on between fellow Top Dog Entertainment artist SZA singing and Kendrick's whispered vocals. The fifth track reflects a lot of the same themes found on tracks like Institutionalized, themes of the depressive nature of those who are institutionalized, especially for those who try to rise above those difficult situations and fail. Part of the first verse of this track was actually performed live at the Grammys this year. Now, some other tracks deal with more positive things such as the following track 6, which speaks on embracing uniqueness, and the message is brought home all the more with CeeLo Green lending its vocals, one who has spoken on his weirdness and uniqueness in past musical efforts like his work with Gnarls Barkley. Moving on to track 7, and really the last track I want to talk about lyrically, this is again a three-part track that basically goes through different phases of Kendrick's emotions. The first part is the initial high after the immense success of his album To Pimp a Butterfly, while the next part focuses on the future and his heightened confidence, while the final part is kind of a coming down, relaxed, chill period. Really impressive track as a whole, but like most other tracks on here, it feels totally broken up, and even though the themes continue throughout the entire track, there's really no musical link between these three parts. Some of the lyrics from this track are found on the fourth track. Overall, it's hard to say whether or not this album deserves the high amount of praise that it gets, considering that it's just a bunch of unfinished or scrapped songs. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a sucker for stuff like this, but it's is it really worth all the praise? 
Perhaps, I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I did Tip of a Butterfly, and why Kendrick decided to scrap these tracks, we'll never know. Um, if there's two tracks that I kind of wish he would have put on the final album, it's tracks 5 and 8. Um, I felt those two were, uh, those two in particular fit what the final album was going for the most. Now, I have to give a shout out to the guys at Dead End Hip Hop for this thought. Uh, when they reviewed the untitled tracks, uh, they brought up the idea that maybe these songs were never meant to be put in the form of, stu of studio versions and that the uh, they should just remain live performances only. This is partially due to the fact that Kendrick performed these songs with such ferocity uh, and intensity during those live performances, and if he put out studio versions, he might not have the same intense drive he did uh, when he was on stage, and with the advent of this album, that's exactly what happened. Um, I was blown away, you know, when he performed Untitled 2 on Jimmy Fallon's uh, show and Untitled 3 at the Grammys, but not so much when listening to this album. Uh, the same drive wasn't there, and that's precisely what the issue was, and they were right. Um, I wouldn't have had any problem if Kendrick decided to leave these songs as just live performances and didn't release them in the form of an album. Uh, even still, this album certainly wasn't bad in any way, and some of the tracks were pretty enjoyable for only being unfinished songs, and I do have to recommend that you at least give this album a listen if you haven't already. Anyways, that does it for this another album review. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, please hit the like button. Also, subscribe if you want to see more. And if there's a song or an album that you want to see reviewed on this channel, just leave a comment down below or check out my Facebook or my Twitter. The links are in the description. But anyways, I will see you all in the next video. So long.